All right, so in this part of the video, we're going to be taking a look at a process that is very, very common and one that I've actually overlooked so far in the videos, and that is baking your mesh maps or texture baking inside of Substance Painter. So what is baking? Baking is basically running a process on your 3D model and generating some maps based on some information. So it'll analyze if curvature data, normal data, um, ambient occlusion, all the types of things that we can either later use in the renderer or use inside a Substance Painter to generate some looks for your textures. So for this Ball Man character, I actually already have the textures painted. So there's a ambient occlusion pass, curvature pass. Again, they're just finding the areas of the object that has the tightest curve to it. Um, position information, the thickness, which areas are thicker versus thinner. Again, all of this stuff can be used to generate some data. So the question is, how do we get this information? So for now, I'm gonna go into my texture set settings little window here and just delete the ones that I have. And I'll show you how to create those from scratch. All right, cool. So in order to create them, the easiest way is to go up here to this little croissant icon. It was originally uh, before Adobe, you know, substance was created by a French company. It's baking, croissant, they're adorable. Okay, so you can either hit F8 or just click that icon. You now enter a new screen, and this is our uh, baking screen. So you can see it's it's the object has changed a little bit. We've got a whole bunch of parameters. There's a lot going on here. Um, there's just a lot of information to digest and process. So here's the deal. The Substance team has actually put together a really, really thorough, like 15 minute long video just on this baking process. I'm going to link that to this video if you really want to deep dive into each one of these settings. Instead, what I'm going to do is show you what I really do in the real world. So again, I'm not often making these for games. I'm generally making them for either still images or videos or, or animation or things like that. So I'm gonna show you my process a little bit and then kind of refer to some of the capabilities for gaming uh, that you can have. So basically a little layout of this window is over here um, on the right hand side, this is like where we're gonna be able to uh, view the, the, the baking happening on our object. We can tumble around it. Um, over here down at the bottom, this is where I can either start baking the textures or return to my paint mode so I could hop back and forth between those two. And then on the left hand side, so this is the main area where we're going to be interacting with this. So this is going to be where all of our parameter controls and where we're going to be setting all of our settings for this. So for me, the main thing that I the, that I want to do is under the, because you're going to start in the common settings and then you can go into each one of the, the maps that, that are being baked here. But inside of my common settings, I, I generally do two things. I first adjust the overall resolution of this object. So a lot of, of the maps that are being painted. So I go high, right? So I go with a 4K texture map, and then I go down here to the anti-aliasing, which is like sub pixel sampling a little bit. And I will, it starts off as none. I actually sub sample it four times, which is, is a little bit of overkill in a lot of situations and and but for me i find that that this amount of data is is what i want um to get the fidelity that i'm looking for now one big downside to this two big downsides to increasing to this resolution number one it'll increase your substance painter file size because all of these maps get baked into the substance file so if file size is a concern to you just be aware that increasing um to higher resolutions will increase that uh, and then the other one is like if you were making it for a game or an AR or VR experience, generating 4K maps might be overkill to the point where you won't actually be able to use them. So just understanding what your end game is. But for me, normally, like I said, I usually make um, I, I stuff for animated content or uh, still images. And so I'm, I'm not overly concerned about that. As I move forward, that'll probably change. But like I said, if you want more information on how to do it, um, into like more details of this information, I would check out the link to the substance video. Um, the other thing that you should be aware of too, and I'm not gonna do it here, is that you do have the option of having your actual model be a lower resolution than the maps that you're painting. And what, what I mean by that is you can, when you're modeling your object, you can model it at a lower resolution, export that model, then subdivide it more inside of Maya Blender or whatever, and export that as your high resolution model. And you can see here, I've got this low poly mesh and high poly mesh. Basically what you can do is you can keep your low polygon resolution mesh inside a Substance Painter, but you can actually reference 
the high poly resolution mesh for baking things like your normal map so you can actually get some more detail without sacrificing poly count. So just some stuff you could do, like I said, if you click that link. But for me, this is what I do. I set the resolution again, 4K, subsampling to four. Um, I then go through each one of these. And one of the things that I do is like for each of the individual parameters, ID map, normal map, uh, world space, normal, I generally keep the same because like the ID map, like I generally want it to be based on material color. If I painted vertex color um, in my original, I will go by that. But generally speaking, it's going to be based off material color of the original. Ambient occlusion. I have a tendency to, to increase the secondary rays all the way. And the other thing I do is I decrease this occluder distance down to about 0.4. I find that the default setting is a little bit too strong um, in that it will, it, it just comes in a little bit too heavy, especially for me who I'm gonna be rendering these inside of applications that are gonna be generating um, ambient shadows themselves. So I don't wanna double that up too much and it creates too dark for shadows in the end. Um, curvature maps, I also like them to have a high secondary rays. Um, so I turn up that secondary rays all the way up. Uh, and then position, just keep that the same. Thickness, I'll turn that all the way up. Uh, these three down here, height, bent normals, and opacity. I only use opacity if the object, or if I'm generating like opacity as a whole. But honestly, it doesn't it doesn't do any harm to, to add these in there as well. Again, it just increases the file size a little bit. But, but just know that like lots of times these don't actually, these actually won't get used too much. So it's totally up to you if you want to bake these out or not. Once I'm done with this and I start setting this up, I just click bake selected textures. You can see it processing here and depending on the, the GPU that you have on your computer, this will move faster or slower. Um, the cool thing about this new baking mode is I can uh, like actually navigate around the object a little bit and see what's going on. And it kind of helps me analyze just to make sure that you know, there aren't gonna be any baking problems, which I don't think that we have here in this object. So um, in just saying, you'll see the progress bar, it's this green bar kind of creeping along the, the bottom there. Um, and yep, and we are done. So I can return to painting mode. And now you can see, again, I can either uh, click through all of the uh, mesh maps this way, or I can hit the B as in Bahrain. Um, on my keyboard and I can click through them this way as well. And then you get back to material, just hit the M key uh, for link. Um, okay, so the question now is awesome, great. I've painted all these texture set, uh, you know, all the different um, um, texture maps on there. Like, what the heck am I gonna do with them? It's a great question and a great answer to that is we're gonna use them to make some generators which I'm gonna show you in the next video.